Greetings and welcome to the Bondi Scrapper channel. In today's video we're going to look at a uh, set of pads off a defibrillator. Try saying defibrillator ten times really quick. Um, yeah, this came from the uh, sporting club that one of my kids coaches at and uh, they were getting it ready for the big reopening after the big COVID lockdown and discovered that uh, they were a little bit out of date, not too bad, not too bad. So they bought some some new pads for their defib and um, defibs are interesting. Bit of an interesting history in New South Wales at least. Um, these used to be, a defibrillator used to be in the 90s when they first came out, around about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 each. Uh, I think you can buy them now for around about five grand, maybe even a bit cheaper. And um, Kerry Packer, who at various times had been Australia's richest man, he was definitely a billionaire, um, he played polo and he had a heart attack on the polo field in New South Wales, out in the western, west, I think it was out Richmond Way, in the northwest of uh, Sydney, the outer, outer northwest of Sydney. And at that time in 1990, there were only two ambulances in uh, New South Wales that had a defibrillator, and one of them happened to be close by to uh, where he was. Not by design, um, it just happened to be that way. And, uh, and it saved his life. And as a thank you to New South Wales, he, uh, he rang up the then Premier, which I think was Nick Griner, and said, uh, how much is it going to cost to put defibs in all the ambulances in Wales? And they knew the price. It was uh, five million. And Kerry said, well, I'll pay two and a half mil. I'll go your halves. And so as a result of that, every ambulance in New South Wales had a uh, defibrillator put in it. So that's just a little bit of history of defibrillators in New South Wales. How do these things work? That bit there, that plug plugs into the main defib machine. The ones we have now are really smart. They tell you exactly what to do and when to hit the button and, and they're quite safe. Um, I've had a fair bit of training in defibs over the last 20 years while I'm, when I've been doing first aid training. The way it works is tells you where to put the pad. That one goes on the uh, the right breast, just above the nipple. Oh, I said nipple, I'll probably get uh, something wrong. And uh, this one goes on the opposite side and around the, I guess you'd call it the waist, but uh, just below the breast. And um, it's got sticky stuff. So you peel that off. And of course, two-handed would be much easier. And this gel light, which I've had a little bit of a pick at, sticks sticks really well. And what are you going to get out of it? Well, if you take the time, if you've got the time up your sleeve, you can peel that back. And that there, I'm assuming, is mylar. So it's got, in the same way as a touchpad, a touchpad might have mylar, so is this. Um, it's, I believe, a silver material, and some people can get it recycled and recover the silver from it. So if you want to really scrape that back, you could do it and recover it. Um, they have the same material in the touchpads on microwave oven. So, but what are we going to get out of this as scrappers? Not much. There's a weird looking silvery thing there. I don't know what that's for. No, can't tell you. So that's, that's metallic. It's probably got a bit of silver recovery. If you're into silver recovery, I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> stick to me. Still sticking. Right on, let's come down. Let's peel that one off. Yep, yeah, it's got the same again. Sticking to me again. Oh, this is ridiculous. And 
down. It's down in here. That'll be brass, that little connection there. So, oh, I'm going to put you in the tripod. You're in the tripod. Let's try and keep you on the screen rather than do my usual. So what are we going to get out of this? We're going to get snippity snip on some wire. There's another metallic connection in there. Oh, and that's magnetic. So that's a little magnet in there. Um, there's going to be some little brass connectors in there, which if this is brittle, which I doubt it is yet, so it's not brittle. So it's going to be a pain to try and snip it. Let's have a go. Well, as I said, I knew this would take forever to get out. So if you're really keen, that is brass. You can get it out with a bit of work. And, you know, I mean, if you want that 0.1 of a cent, otherwise, the magnet's good. There we go. There's the magnet. So that's a nice little magnet to stick onto your pliers. And then as you're out scrapping, you can test things to see whether they're ferrous or non-ferrous. Um, but yeah, that one there, for me, that just goes into my bin that goes off to the scrap metal yard and gets seven cents a kilo. So throw him away. Got this bit up. I mean, this thing's just going to be heavy duty everything, like the connections and all that, because, you know, I guess they know that people are going to be in panic and they're going to be... Uh, So we get a bit of wire and that is kind of, oh. so there's not much there, but I'll throw that in with the two dollar thirty stuff. Yeah, that little bit, my guy's just gonna not even notice that. So that's okay. And um As I said, man, that is stuck like dog poo to your shoe, isn't it? And see, so, and it's even it's magnetic, so the little rivet in the middle is um causing us problems, so that's not worth anything either. That goes into the magnet stuff. That's it, job done. We know what it's all about. So, that's it. Uh, that was an interesting one. That was purely not for scrap value. That was just purely to uh, hmm, see how things get put together. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, if you don't like it, Rather than just thumbs down, tell me. Tell me what you don't like about it. And thanks for watching. Bye.